So next we're going to work with definite integrals. Now the big difference with a definite integral is that limits of x are set. So let's say for example we find the definite integral between 2 and 5 of 4x cubed minus 2x to the 4 dx. We know it's a definite integral because we have limits of x set here, 2 and 5. Now the first step is exactly the same as before, however the notation changes slightly. So if I begin by integrating this function, 4x cubed is going to become x to the 4, and the coefficient is going to be 4 over 4. And then we've got minus 2x to the 5, so the 4 becomes a power 5, we raise the power by 1, and then we divide by the new power. Now previously, when we did indefinite integrals, we included a constant on here. But when we do definite integrals, we don't need to include that constant. The reasons behind that is because when we get to the next stage, these constants would cancel out. But for simplicity, we will state that when we do definite integrals, we don't include the constant. And when we do indefinite integrals, we do include the constant. So next then, from a notation perspective, we need to put this into square brackets to indicate that we've already integrated the function. And this time, we place our limits on the outside here. Now, with it being a definite integral, we're going to need to find the value of the integral when x equals 5, first of all. And then we're going to need to subtract the value of the integral when x equals 2. Just before we do that, let's simplify this further. So we've got 4 over 4 is just 1. So our first term is just x to the 4. And then we've got 2 fifths of x to the 5 minus 2 fifths x to the 5. We'll leave it in that form with the fraction. And our limits are between 2 and 5. Now when we input 5 into the function, we need to represent this with a rounded bracket. Okay, so inputting 5, we get 5 to the power 4 minus 2 fifths times 5 to the power 5. And then we close our rounded bracket. But then we need to subtract the value of the integral when x equals 2. So once again, we have a rounded bracket, and this time we input 2 into the function. So we've got 2 to the 4 minus 2 fifths times 2 to the 5. Now the value of that definite integral can be calculated now. So if we work out the value of our first bracket first of all, that gives us minus 625. And then from that, we need to subtract the value of the integral when x equals 2. So again, if we calculate that through, and this time, that gives us 3.2. Therefore, the value of this integral between the limits of x equals 2 and x equals 5 is minus 628.2. Now you may be wondering how you can have a negative area. All it tells us is that the area falls below the x-axis. So if we had our x and y-axis, and we had our function below the line here, all it's telling us is that that area, with it being negative, that area falls below our x-axis. If it had been positive, then it would have been above the x-axis. And we'll look at an example where it's positive next. So this time, we're going to integrate a function between the limits of 3 and 10. And that function is going to be x cubed minus 3 over x squared dx. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is to modify this term here by moving the x squared from the bottom to the top. So I'm going to have the integral between the limits of 3 and 10 of x cubed minus 3 x to the minus 2. x to the minus 2 because I've taken x squared from the bottom to the top of that term. dx. Next I can integrate that. Well when I integrate that, to show that it's been integrated, I'm going to use square brackets. x cubed is going to integrate as follows. The 3 or the cubed is going to become x to the power 4. And then I need to divide the original coefficient by the new power. Well, the original coefficient is just 1, because 1x cubed and x cubed are exactly the same thing. So I've got 1 divided by 4 for the new coefficient. Well, 1 divided by 4 is just a quarter. Next, 
I have minus 3x to the minus 2. Well, x to the minus 2, raising the power by 1, becomes x to the minus 1. And 3 divided by the new power is 3 divided by minus 1. Our limits, 3 and 10. So I'm going to simplify this. And when I simplify it, I'm going to get a quarter x to the power 4. Minus 3 divided by minus 1 is just plus 3. And our limits are 3 and 10. I'm going to simplify that one step further. So I've got a quarter x to the 4. Well, 3x to the minus 1 is the same as 3 over x. And our limits remain as 3 and 10. So now we can start inputting our values of x. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the value of the function when x equals 10. And once I've found the value of the function when x equals 10, I'm going to subtract the value of the function when x equals 3. So the next line then, rounded brackets, because now we're inputting values. I've got a quarter x to the 4, which is a quarter times 10 to the 4 plus 3 over 10. And then I need to subtract the value of the function when x equals 3. So I'm going to subtract a quarter times 3 to the power 4 plus 3 over 3. Now running those numbers then, the first set of brackets, a quarter times 10 to the 4 plus 3 tenths is 2500.3. Zero, zero and the second bracket when x equals 3 is 21.25. Therefore, the value of the integral of the original function or the area underneath the original function between the limits of 3 and 10 is 2479.1 to one decimal place. With the value of the integral being positive, what we know is we have a function. The area under the integral between the limits of 3 and 10 is positive because the value of the integral is positive and the area that we've calculated is 2479.1. So let's just finish by revisiting our original integral. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the area under the graph between the limits of 4 and 7. So we're going to find this area here under the graph. So the first step is to integrate the function. So we're going to find the integral between the limits of 4 and 7 of 0.5x cubed minus 4x squared plus 65 dx. Well, integrating that function, we've got square bracket x to the fourth. And then we need to divide a half by the new power. Well, a half divided by 4 is just 0 0.125. The minus 4x squared, well, raising the power by 1, is going to give us x cubed. And dividing the original coefficient, which was 4, by the new power 3, we'll leave it as a fraction, 4 divided by 3. Plus 65, integrating that, well, plus 65 is the same as 65x to the 0. Therefore, integrating that is going to give us 65x. Our limits are 4 and 7. So the next step then is to input 7 into the function and calculate the value of the integral when x equals 7 and then subtract the value of the integral when x equals 4. So on our next line then we have 0.125 times 7 to the power 4 minus 4 thirds times 7 cubed plus 65 times 7 and from that we need to minus the value of the integral when x equals 4 so we're going to minus 0.125 times 4 to the power 4 
minus 4 thirds times 4 cubed plus 65 times 4. Now when we run that through our calculators we get for the first bracket 297.8 to one decimal place and for the second bracket we get 206.7 to one decimal place giving us a final value of 91.1 therefore the area under our graph between the limits of x equals 4 and x equals 7 is 91 now looking at that area that seems fairly accurate because what we see here is this line here is 30 Along the bottom, we've got a distance of 3. 3 times 30 is 90, and our integral is 91.1. So it's fair to assume that the value of the integral that we've calculated here is accurate.